Hey everybody and welcome back to Lindsay's Little Library. So I have a bit of a book haul for you today before another really big book haul, but we're not going to talk about that right now. Um, so I have a few books I want to go to, some that were given to me or sent to me, uh, book of the month books, and then a little incident where I drank a little much at book club, book club and ended up buying a book, but we're okay. It's okay. Um, first one I got sent to me is Mistletoe Season by Michelle Major. I've read a couple of books by her and I really, really love her. They just give me such good, good feels. I mean, it, there's definitely more, I don't even know how to describe it. It's contemporary romance, yet there's a little bit more. There's usually some sort of family drama involved in it. It's all fantastic. They take place in North Carolina and I love them. So we're going to spend the holidays in Magnolia, North Carolina, where two lonely hearts find exactly what they need for Christmas. And I can, I'm just going to take it all. I can't wait. I'm reading this starting in December. It's happening. It's already out and available. It came out um, the end of October. So you can go get it. Go get your copy. Love it. Um, next book I was sent is The New Land. It's the Overstreet Sockets book one by David O. Stewart. Um, this one takes place during the, in 1753, during the French and Indian War. Um, and we follow um, Chris, Christiane as she announces that her infant sons will never be, will never soldier for the Landgraf of Hesse like their father, hired out to serve King George of England in search of a new life. Johan and the family join in an expedition to the New World, lured by the promise of land on the main coast. A grinding voyage deposits them on the edge of a continent filled with dangers and disease. I'm all for it. I'm all in for it. Um, I I need to expand my historical fiction horizons and timelines that I've been reading, and this is going to be my first opportunity. Thank you so much, and I cannot wait to pick that up. And the next one I got is was sent to me from a subscriber, Alicia. Um, I love watching your YouTube channel, and you always have such great recommendations. It's a little piece of joy in this crazy world. Well, thank you. Hope you enjoy this book as much as I did. Lots of twists and turns, which I'm all for. So it's Your Secret Became Mine by P.S. Fishback. 20 years ago, Aaron Steedley found her brother Thomas strangled on his bedroom floor. The case remains cold, leaving his family without closure. Aaron, a therapist married to a controlling husband, returns home where the murder happened. While snooping through Thomas's belongings, Aaron discovers a hidden part of his life that led to his death. It's skinny, so full of twists and terms. I am all for it. So thank you, thank you so much for sending this to me. Then, what do I have? I picked this one up at good old Costco, The Stolen Lady by Laura Morelli. I was thinking this would be a historic, a historathon, three word title prompt one. It didn't quite make it. Um, but we have France 1931 and Florence 1479, which I thought was really interesting for dual timelines. At the dawn of World War II, Anne is a young archivist employed by the, the Lavore. She arrives home to find her brother missing. When Anne works to discover his whereabouts, refugees begin flooding into Paris and German artillery fire rattles the city. Once they reach the city, the Nazis will stop at nothing to get their hands on the art collection. Anne is quiet, is quickly sent to the Chateau of Chambard, Chambord, where the Lavore's most precious artworks, including the Mona Lisa, are being transferred to ensure their safety. When the Germans hard on her heels, the staff frantically move the Mona Lisa and her treasures again and again in an elaborate game of hide and seek. So then we have Florence 7, 1479, house servant Bellina. Her future seems fixed when she accompanies her newly married mistress, Lisa, to her home across the Arno. Lisa's husband, a prosperous silk merchant, is aligned with the powerful Medici, his home filled with luxuries and treasures. But soon she finds herself bewitched by a charismatic monk who has urged the Florentines to rise up against Medici and to empty their homes of the riches and jewels that her new employer prizes. When Master Leonardo da Vinci is commissioned to paint a portrait of Lisa, Bellini finds herself tasked with hiding an impossible secret. I have a feeling it's connected to the Mona Lisa. Hmm, coincidence? I don't know, but sounds fantastic. All right, the next couple I picked up at my library because they're cheap and I wanted them. Um, I grabbed this Nicholas Sparks for a dollar. It's the return. I have a interesting relationship with Nicholas Sparks. I either love him or I don't like him. Love Safe Haven, like on one of my top 40 lists of all time, but others not so much. So this one follows Trevor Benson. He never intended to move back to Newburn, North Carolina. Are you done? 
But when a mortar blast outside the hospital where he worked sent him home from Afghanistan with devastating injuries, the dilapidated cabin he inherited from his grandfather seemed as good of a place to regroup as any. Tending to his grandfather's beloved beehives, Trevor, Trevor isn't prepared to fall in love with a local, yet from their very first encounter, Trevor feels a connection with Deputy Sheriff Natalie that he can't ignore. But even as she seems to reciprocate his feelings, she remains frustratingly distant, making Trevor wonder what she's hiding. Further complicating his stay in New Bern is the presence of a sullen teenage girl, Callie, who lives in the trailer parked on the road. He hopes Callie can shed life, light on the mysterious circumstances of his grandfather's death, but she offers few clues until a crisis triggers a race to uncover the true nature of Callie's past. This has potential. I like it. Then I picked up book two of Nora Roberts' Chronicles of the One series, so now I have all three of them. Are you done? So now I have all three of them and can read that series sometime. I don't know when. Uh, book of the Month books for this month, we have The Lincoln Highway by Amor Tolls. He wrote A Gentleman in Moscow. This thing is massive. Um, but I'm hoping to read this sooner than later. I don't know anything about it other than I liked the author. I liked his writing of A Gentleman in Moscow, and I just can't wait to pick this one up. Um, I don't know. Stylish and preclusive novel set in 1950s America. I am having issues with words today, so I'm not even going to read that one, but I'm excited for that one. I was hoping to get to the X Hex by Aaron Sterling. I've been hearing really great things about this one as well. It just didn't happen in October, so we'll save it for next year. It says never mix vodka, vodka and witchcraft. Solid advice. And then at book club, after a few beers, I bought Dear Miss Metropolitan by Carolyn Farrell off of Amazon when one of the book club members just couldn't stop raving about this. All right, first of all, we have a map of a house in here, which I mean, hello, anything with a map. It's about unexpected hor humor, sorry, it's a work of masterful storytelling, unexpected humor, provocation, and ultimately hope. So we have Fern. She seeks refuge from her mother's pill popping and boyfriends via Soul Train. Gwyn finds salvation in the music of Prince, much to her con congregation's dismay. And Jacenia, miles ahead of her classmates at her gifted and talented high school, is a brainy and precocious enigma. None of them matters to Boss Man. He abducts them and holds them captive in a dilapidated house in Queens. Only two of the victim girls are found when they are rescued. On that night, throngs line the block, gawking and claiming ignorance. Among them is a lifelong resident, Miss Metropolitan. She's an advice columnist for the local weekly. But how can anyone who fancies herself a newspaper woman have missed a horror story unfolding in her own neighborhood? The mystery surrounding the fate of the third girl and the fragmented existence of the survivors stand on the pulsing center of this literary page turner. So I picked that up. She said it's fantastic. I needed this in my hands. So... That's what I have. Not horrible, not too bad of a book haul, but um, let's just say there's more coming. So anyways, if you've read any of these and you have any recommendations for me, leave a comment below. Otherwise, like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.